Hello there, and welcome. My name is Jason Millwood, and you are listening to Plugged into Virta, the electric vehicle charging podcast. The future of mobility is electric. In this podcast, we'll discuss about the newest and hottest topics in the world of e-mobility, smart EV charging, energy management, and the business around it. We'll go under the surface and discuss openly about the challenges, opportunities, solutions, and trends. We'll give you honest, fact-based information and tell you what it means in practice in plain English. So, if you want to hear insights from top experts, learn more about the world of EV charging and the future outlook, or just want to listen to some inspiring stories from around the world of EV charging, this podcast is for you. In this episode, we're going to talk about key trends of EV charging by 2025. I'm joined today by Elias Beru, member of the European Commission's Sustainable Transport Forum and chairman of Euroelectric's e-mobility working group. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. The pace of change has accelerated in the electric vehicle market and in the EV charging industry. As a result, the EV charging market in 2025 will look very different to what's compared to today. Today, we're going to look at the biggest trends in the e-mobility and EV charging at the moment. So before we dive into the, today's subject, uh, why don't you just tell us a bit more about yourself, Elias, introduce yourself. Thanks. So yes, my name is Elias Böru, and uh, uh, apart from being, of course, chair of, chair of uh, your electric e-mobility working group and, and member of the Sustainable Transportation Forum with the Euroelectric Mandate, uh, I'm a co-founder of Virta which is the second largest e-mobility e operator or e-mobility platform in Europe. So let me paint you a picture. It's 2025, the average person can afford an EV and also plan to buy one. Uh, EV purchase price parity has been reached and the lifetime cost of an EV is lower than the traditional internal combustion engine car. Range anxiety doesn't exist anymore as the EV drives range will be at least 400 kilometers or more and ultra fast chargers enable smooth driving in anywhere with less than 15 minutes charging per stop. Is this just a dream or is this a reality in five years time? Good question. Actually, it's already a reality this year for some cars and for some people and some car segments. So, so definitely this will be the big picture of, of reality for everybody in, in 2025. Uh, maybe some angles that change this picture is, is it's not just about the experience that we have with combustion cars and changing it to the EVs, but also people's uh, te tendency to use these services or pe people's uh, way of thinking changes. So instead of thinking that you need a 15-minute fast charge, which you already almost get, you start thinking that it's so much easier to charge home and it only takes six seconds, three seconds to plug in in the evening and three seconds to plug out in, in the morning. So, so it's a question also of s uh, setting a totally new standard on how we use these services and, and also how we use transportation services. I don't think that uh, we will be fixed to just one car anymore in 25 and beyond, but, but we rather use more mobility services that are well connected to each other than on, on these kind of uh, mobile services. Okay. What do you think the biggest changes and key trends that will transform the electric mobility and EV charging market in the coming years? If you could pick, say, four or five biggest trends, what would they be? Well, first of all, it's beginning to be business as usual. So, so it means that uh, the services are becoming uh, cost-efficient real businesses. It's no more kind of... Uh, tech ventures that someone tries to pull off with their fancy ideas. Yeah, not but startups anymore. No, it's... no, but they're, they're standardizing. Actually, we are not just defined a small company anymore. We are defined as medium-sized company mm -hmm. this year. So, so this is getting professional. And when it gets professional, of course, the companies that run EV business, they want to be cost efficient. So the cost efficiency is driving the, the service creation in a sense. And of course, that's good for the end user because the end users even eventually pay, pay for the cost that these kind of systems create. A second trend I, I would bring in is um, the end user services themselves. So, so the service level people expect is that they can use their EV charging service everywhere, which means every country. But it also means that it's the same thing you use for home, for fleets, for public charging when you go to shopping. And you get them all on one invoice and so on. So so the end-to-end -end service uh, kind of creation is very important and that, that we see happening now. 
The third trend I would pick up is um, the globalization of these services. So small startups grow, but also there is uh, consolidation happening in the market. So, so what we're going to see is quite global service providers for EV charging. And of course, that also helps to choose the right provider. And, and as, as well, it helps to have a, a, at least European wide, but also later maybe global service offerings that, that help the end user in their daily, daily charging routines. And maybe, maybe as, as, as the fourth one, I, I would pick the energy services. So now almost all EV charging companies are defining themselves as actually future energy companies. And, and I think that's the big picture. It, it relates to how we can balance the energy system and, and how we can make sure that the energy system is not overheating while everybody is using our EVs. But of course, the other part of the picture is that when we build extensive networks of EV charging, we have to make them very cost efficient also in terms of uh, grid connections uh, and, and uh, also in terms of how end users can have the cheapest possible energy for their EVs and maybe even become uh, prosumers that, that also uh, bring some assets, energy assets from their cars to the network. So I think this would be the, maybe the more key, uh, four key trends. Okay. So let's dig a bit more deeper into these trends. Can you tell me some more details about them? Maybe some of the challenges you're facing, uh, obstacles ahead or something like that? Of course, when we do new things, uh, the world is not ready for them. And and the, this goes also with, let's say, the globalization of EV ch uh, charging services. So, so we are lacking a lot of uh, legislation, which means that we're in an immature environment where, where we have to kind of speculate on how things will evolve and try to build the service models to, to fit the future regulations. Uh, for example, VAT regulation in Europe, it's not necessarily clear on which country you should pay your VAT when you do cross-border transactions, cross-border charging events. And, and these kind of uh, things cause a lot of problems for the service providers. It doesn't necessarily show to the end user because we solve them, but it's a, it's a really hard job for the players in the market to find the solutions for the immature market okay all right well thank you very much for joining us Elias uh, it's been a, a pleasure to have you on thank you and that's it for this episode of Plugged Into Virta the electric vehicle charging podcast thank you for listening if you like this podcast don't forget to follow and subscribe and please share it to your colleagues and friends we appreciate all your feedback reviews and ratings too you can connect with us on LinkedIn at Virta Limited and if you're looking for more information about EV charging, e-mobility and energy management, visit us at virta.global. Until next time, thank you for joining us. Let's take charge of the future together.